Let's learn about cell signaling. This is an important area for CSAR examination. The following are the topics coming under cell signaling. Hormones and their receptors. Cell surface receptor. Signaling through G protein coupled receptors. Signal transduction pathways. Second messengers. Regulation of signaling pathways. Bacterial and plant two component systems. Light signaling in plants. Bacterial chemotaxis and quorum sensing. There are six basic signaling mechanisms. Gated ion channel, receptor enzymes, serpentine receptors, steroid receptors, receptor with no intrinsic enzyme activity and adhesion receptors. Gated ion channel. As the name indicates, it acts as a gate. It opens and closes in response to signal or membrane potential. Membrane potential means the charge across the plasma membrane, whether it is positive or negative. Initially, receptor is in closed condition. When a signal is coming, it binds to the receptor and channel is open. Ions move inward. Receptor enzyme. It has two domains, extracellular domain and intracellular domain. Signal ligand binds to the extracellular domain and stimulates the enzyme activity at the intracellular domain. Serpentine receptors. Serpentine receptors belong to a huge family of receptors. It contains seven transmembrane alpha helixes. Here, signal binds to receptor and activate an intracellular GTP binding protein. This activated GTP binding protein regulates an enzyme and enzyme generates an intracellular second messenger. Example, cyclic AMB, phospholipase C, etc. Here, R represents receptor, G represents GTP binding protein and X represents second messengers. Steroid receptor. Steroid hormone acts as a signal. Steroid hormone diffuses across the plasma membrane and binds to the receptor. And this hormone binding resulting in conformation change and this complex moves into the nucleus. This interaction gives rise to an increase or decrease in the rate of gene transcription. Receptor with no intrinsic enzyme activity. Here, the receptor doesn't have any intrinsic enzyme activity, but receptor attracts and activates cytosolic protein kinases. These cytosolic protein kinases activate a gene regulatory protein. There are two pathways. In first pathway, protein kinase is directly converted into a gene regulatory protein. Second is by activating a cascade of enzymes that finally activate a gene regulatory protein. Adhesion receptor. It binds to molecules in extracellular matrix and changes its conformation, thereby altering its interaction with cytoskeleton. Gated ion channels are of two types, ligand gated and voltage gated. Let's learn the following terms, polarized, hyperpolarized, depolarized and repolarization. Polarized means inside negative charge. Hyperpolarized means inside more negative charge. Depolarized means inside positive charge. Repolarization means there is a change in membrane potential, change from positive to negative value. Ion channels are gated. Sodium, potassium, calcium and chlorine ions move across the plasma membrane in response to various stimuli. These ion channels are gated. They may be open or closed depending on whether the receptor has been activated by a signal or by a change in the transmembrane electrical potential. Let's talk about transmembrane electrical potential. Sodium potassium ATPase create a charge imbalance across the plasma membrane. In this figure, you can see the representation of sodium potassium ATPase. It pump out three sodium and pump in two potassium. This is an example of active transport. Here, ATP is converted into ADP and 2-phosphate. 3 sodium pumping out means 3 positive charge going out. 2 potassium pumping in means 2 positive charge coming in. In summary, 3 minus 2, 1 positive charge going out, making inside negative related to outside. The membrane is said to be polarized, positive outside, negative inside. 
At the left side of this figure, you can see four circles. It represents ion channels. In response to various stimuli, sodium, potassium, calcium and chloral ions tend to move across the plasma membrane. This is an example of passive transport. Influx of sodium and calcium, both carry positive charge, make inside more positive. It depolarizes the membrane. Efflux of chlorine ions also depolarize the membrane. Here charge is negative. Chlorine ions going out means negative charge going out. It make inside positive. Efflux of potassium ions hyperpolarize the membrane. Positive charge going out means more negative inside. Ligand gated ion channel. Example nicotinic acetylcholine receptor. In this figure, initially receptor is closed resting state. Then the receptor is in open condition, that is excited state. And finally the gate is closed, that is desensitized state. Acetylcholine is released by an excited neuron. It diffuses across the synaptic cleft or neuromuscular junction. This acetylcholine interacts with the acetylcholine receptor. Conformation change occurs, channel open. Either sodium or calcium can now pass through the channel. Invert flow of these sodium and calcium ions depolarize the plasma membrane. That means positive charge coming in. When acetylcholine level remains high for more than a few milliseconds, the receptor is desensitized. Gate closed. Finally, acetylcholine esterase break down acetylcholine. This cycle is repeated. Voltage gated ion channel. There are three types of voltage gated ion channels, voltage gated sodium channel, voltage gated potassium channels and voltage gated calcium channel. Voltage gated sodium channels are closed when membrane is at rest, but it opens when the membrane is depolarized in response to acetylcholine. We have learned acetylcholine binds to acetylcholine receptor, channel opens, either sodium or calcium can enter. These sodium or calcium flow make inside more positive. This is depolarization. This depolarization causes opening of voltage gated sodium ion channels. Positive charge coming in. Again depolarization. This depolarization due to the inward flow of sodium through the voltage gated sodium channels induce voltage gated potassium channels to open. Resulting in the efflux of potassium ions, it repolarizes the membrane. Positive charge going out. Voltage gated calcium channels. These voltage gated calcium channels are located at the distal end of axon. When the wave of depolarization reaches at the distal tip of axon, voltage gated calcium channels open, calcium enters and triggers the release of acetylcholine from vesicles. Role of voltage gated and ligand gated ion channels in neural transmission. In this figure, you can see axon of presynaptic neuron and cell body of postsynaptic neuron. At rest, plasma membrane of presynaptic neuron is polarized, negative inside and positive outside. Then a stimulus is coming. It makes an action potential to move along the axon. It makes the opening of voltage-gated sodium ion channels, sodium enter inside and resulting local depolarization. Other sodium channels also open. It induces voltage-gated potassium channels to open and potassium going out, resulting repolarization of membranes. Voltage-gated sodium and potassium channels of neuron and membranes carry the action potential along the axon as a wave of depolarization followed by repolarization. Depolarization by sodium influx and repolarization by potassium efflux. When a wave of depolarization reaches at the distal tip of axon, voltage-gated calcium channels open and it triggers the release of acetylcholine into synaptic cleft. Acetylcholine binds to acetylcholine receptor, receptor open, either sodium or calcium, enter through this channel, depolarizing the postsynaptic cell. This depolarization causes opening of voltage-gated sodium ion channels, sodium coming inside it induces potassium channels to open potassium ions going out it repolarizes the membrane this is repeated to third neuron 